Are we live? I think we're live. Hello, hello everyone. You're watching the world of Clink. I'm back. I'm back. Small hiatus. I've been really busy. I've been really, really busy. But we're back with what I've said was going to happen, which is a Stellaris Let's Play. Listen to that epic Stellaris music. I really hope I don't get hit from a YouTube thing because this is awesome. I really love the Stellaris music and I generally don't hear it enough. So, I actually haven't played Stellaris since the latest patch. What is Stellaris? It is a 4x... Um, it's a 4 by. Sorry. Um, just bear with me. I'm I'm so excited as I normally am when playing a game. Uh, Stellaris is a 4 by, uh, strategic Grand Strategy space civilization management game um, by Paradox. Those guys behind Crusader Kings and everything else. So if you haven't heard of it, it's basically got a whole bunch of different sci-fi tropes. Um, you can build your own sort of species, uh, colonize planets, you'll find various things similar to like, uh, I don't know, Terminator or uh, Isaac Asimov. It's just got all, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, it's got all various sci-fi tropes. Star Trek, of course, big one, and Star Wars as well. Um, and yeah, you basically got to help manage your species to to the end. So this is going to be a let's play. I'm probably going to do one, maybe two Stellaris streams a week if I'm really enjoying it. This one's going to be just sort of a, a, a setup stream. Um, again, I just have not had the time this week um, to really get stuck into this. Dark Soul will still be occurring as normal on the weekend. Anyway, so just quickly, um, I always play with. I tend to play with the modded Stellaris. Um, I haven't actually played the new, the new. Um, uh, what should I call it? DLC that's actually just come out recently. It came out last month. So I've installed that as well. So we're going to be seeing some of that. Uh, so it also has a whole bunch of DLC. And all the DLC completely changes how the game plays. Uh, which is wonderful. It's just what you want. And as well as that, they're very much... Uh, if you've played a Paradox game before, if you haven't played one, they their, their idea with DLCs and patches is that when you have a DLC, it comes with a patch which completely changes how various functions of the game run. So it's almost a new game every time and that's how they've been able to keep them going and going and going. Crusader Kings 2, I don't even know how old that game is. I think it's like five years with like 18 pieces of DLC. And like, it's still it's still really fun to play. Anyway, let's stop the moment for that. So just quickly on the mods, um, I've, there's a list of all of these in the, the comments, uh, sorry, the notes um, about the stream. So if you do want to know, so Ancient Cache of Technologies, that basically just adds in various techs you can find on worlds. At War gives you access to a planetary defense force. Oh, sorry, At War Planetary Defense Force basically allows you to construct a planetary defense force that, like, basically fighters, fighter bases and so on and missile defense from your planet. Doesn't do terribly much, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, beautiful Universe makes everything look cool. Uh, ethics Civics, I really highly recommend this mod. It is great. It adds an additional whole bunch of ethics and civics for creating your civ. Uh, which again we'll be going through and having a look at uh, so I really highly recommend that dynamic political events adds in additional political events for democracies I think and republics so we'll be playing a democracy so we'll see some of that hopefully pop up expanded slash traditions this is the other mod I really this is the one of the the, tr the triumvirate of mods that I think is really worth worth it uh, expanded slash traditions adds in an additional I think it's like 50 traditions to the, the base 10 Oh, sorry, it goes from 10 to 50, so about 40 extra editions. And all of them are all funky sci-fi type things, sort of drawn out and, and, and basically created sub-traditions and everything. And it means that you don't need to just finish up with 10 traditions. You can keep going to 15, 20 if you really wanted to. Um, or you can use it on the edicts just as normal. And they're really flavorful. They're not, I wouldn't say balanced, but they. You, I play this game for roleplay, and I will be playing this game for roleplay. If you're wanting a meta stream, you're probably in the wrong stream. Um, Real Space New Frontiers, Real Space Space Battle, and Real Space 3.3 basically just changes up some things to make um, space a little bit more real and realistic. Uh, sorry, Planetary Diversity. I've skipped bits, haven't I? Planetary Diversity adds a bunch of new planets. This makes things look cooler. Um, Giga Structural Engineering, that is the third Uber mod, and that basically adds in a whole bunch of mega structures called Giga Structures. Uh, some, of, some of which you'll recognize, but they're really cool. Anyway, that's that's that. Uh, Zenith of Fallen Empires Ultimate Edition, that's just a whole bunch. That's about seven mods, six or seven mods, that create changes how Fallen Empires work and also gives you access to potentially become a Fallen Empire yourself, uh, or at least a Zenith of one, uh, before you fall horribly. Uh, Ultimate Imperium Man Nameless, uh, Warhammer 40k, Imperium of Man Names. They're awesome. Uh, if you don't know what Warhammer 40k is, uh, get this anyway, it's awesome. Uh, war name variety. This all this does is it gives you more war names. Cool. That's all the mods. Hooray! I can turn this off now. I think. Can I turn this off? 
Boom. It's gone. Ha ha. Victory. All right, let's get it. Look. So we're going to go a new game. So I'm going to go through. So I've already created this species, but we're just going to go through the species creator anyway. Um, and I might need to update them. I haven't updated them, I don't think, for the latest set of mods. This is the Emu, the Emu Confederation of Colonies. They're avians from a savanna world. Let's uh, let's have a look at them. So when you create a species, first up is you choose an appearance. Now some of these are DLC packs, but you can get most of them uh, without too many issues. So you got like the original. I don't even know what the hell that's from. Um, plantoid, fungoid, molluscoid, arthropod. I know the molluscoid has a snail with a piece of straw in its mouth. I mean that's just epic. Um, arthropod, avian which the Emu Mu are, uh, Mammalian, Reptilian, Machine. So these don't actually do anything except for make you guys look cool. Um, machine does do a few... Uh, well, I think Machine, you still need to choose the ethic. I think you can be a Machine... Um, uh, you'll see. You'll see how the ethics work. Uh, so I never put in a biography about the Emu, but um, look, they're, they're freaking... They're Emus. They're goddamn Emus. They're anthropomologized Emus. Uh, so they're called the Emu Mew, their plural is Emu Mew, their adjective is Emu Man. Get it? Ha. Huh? Um, you then choose the prefix for your ships and various other bits and pieces of the leader names. Um, so you've got, what the frick is this? Beast of Burke or Petra Ripper. I think this must have come from that Imperial Man name list. I didn't actually know it had that in there. Um, hmm, interesting. There it is. I owe... Imperium of Man. So anyway, we're just going to go with the Avian 3. I honestly do not know where that came from. I'm slightly concerned. Um, but we will go with this. I think it was this. Oh no, that, that that's it. The flowery names. Not the flowery names. Traits. So then you go in and you pick the traits for the species. So the Emu are fleeting. But they are rapid breeders. They breed very quickly. They are quick learners as well. Uh, but they are deviants, and that they um, that isn't what it sounds like. Uh, basically, what it means is that they have no real strong um, loyalty to their own um, to their own government. So they're they're rebellious in nature and constantly try to challenge the status quo. So they basically have lots of different ideas about how to do things. But they're also communal, so they stay in packs. Um, that basically means that you can have less more in a, more in a population than you can in others. Fleeting, they die earlier. Rapid breeders, they breed quicker, quick learners, they get quicker experience. But there's all sorts of ones you can choose here. You can choose stuff like adaptive to allow them to breed on planets a lot easier. Uh, talented to increase their leader level caps. Um, they can be quarrelsome. Or traditional, strong, weak, sedentary, charismatic, repugnant. You can even make them older. Uh, you can make them decadent, need slaves, or wasteful so they use all the pop good upkeep. Um, and basically you just add it up so you've got five, a maximum of I think five traits versus five points. And you can change these later during the game as well, which is really awesome. All right, that's the that's the traits of the Ebi Moon. Let's go on. There we go. Oh, whoa. okay. So this is that planetary diversity mod. So there's normally uh, nine planets you can choose from. This the planetary diversity mod adds in all of this stuff, so you can have stuff like radiotrophic world and geothermal world and super habitable world and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. I like quite like the bioluminescent world. That's that's quite cool. But also all of these different versions of stuff. Um, yeah, so Savannah is, I think, one of the traditional ones. I'm not sure if I want to choose something different like Prairie World, in a sense. Just Dune World. Hmm. <laughs> See what I mean by sci-fi stuff? They just throw sci-fi stuff in. It's so great. Um, and these are just mods. Uh, a crag world, a cascading world, a retinal world, forest world, atoll world, dune. What is this? So that's the steppe. Uh, or step. I don't, know, I don't even know how it's pronounced, actually. I think I must have... Prairie world. There we go. Prairie world's probably probably a bit better. Probably a bit better for the Emu. Um, so the home world name is... Uh, home world name. You can change that. You can change egg. You can change the starting solar system as well. Um, it's got, I think, soul and one other one. So it's not huge much you can do. Uh, what type of city do you want to look at? I don't honestly know what this is from. It's just confusing the hell out of me. Okay, so you know I mentioned that ethics thing? This is all of those other ethics that you get now. So normal in the game there's six. From memory I actually haven't played the unmodded game in such a long time. Uh, so you get a number of ethics to actually play with here. Um, and that and the ethics indirectly term your government. So I just need to remember a bit fanatic libertarian and materialist. So 
if, for example, I was uh, an authoritarian, right, that then suddenly cuts out. You can't have a democracy because our people are authoritarian. They're not going to be a democracy um, or a machine intelligence or a hive mind or anything like that. That's gestalt, by the way. That that opens up hive mind. Um, but you could be a corporate, you could be an oligarch, you could be dictatorial, or you could be imperial. I mean, well, if you choose something like spiritual, that doesn't actually really change much on the governments. But it might, if you say, choose, say, elitist. Again, authoritarian would change that. Libertarian would mean you'd have to get one of those. And it may also, it also changes the civics that your government can actually have. Now, the Emu are, um, they're materialists. They're fanatic libertarians. What else are they going to be? Let's let's make them ecologists. I think they they feel like ecologists to me. Um, and they're xenophiles. They are very much xenophiles. They love meeting new people and squawking at them. Um, that that is absolutely true. Of course, I could go individualist, mm -hmm. collectivist, pop amenities unit, amenities usage, pop housing. Mm, could make them even more collectivist. No, they're not communists. They're not communists. Um, materialistic. Yeah, I think that's all pretty cool. Uh, they are libertarians, so that's all good. So, I suppose I could even go like regular libertarians. Nah, keep, it, keep, keep them super libertarian. They're all about freedom. Freedom! So, I can now choose my various bits and pieces. Now, I do need to choose a government, and that will unlock my civic choices. So, in this, uh, so we can either be an indirect democracy. So, indirect democracies have regular elections where all citizens can vote on who should represent them. So, Indirect democracy is essentially what we call representative democracy. Pretty much every single in democracy in the world these days uses uh, an, in, uh, an indirect democracy. Direct democracy is a whole different set of kettle of fish because it um, basically everyone uh, decides on policy initiatives, bureaucratic efficiencies increase, and that type of thing. So direct democracies, look, I could go into politics all day. Um, direct democracies can't really work in our world at the moment. It would require everyone to sort of take part a lot. Certainly there are some some countries that do that a lot better than others. Um, but generally speaking, we all, if we live in a democracy, we tend to elect our representatives to do it. Alternatively, I could also be a corporate, but the Imimu are neither of those. They are a representative people. They're going to have to be a direct democracy. So you get some various different things here. An indirect democracy allows faction influence gain. So essentially factions are various people who put pressure on government. And direct democracies are ones that basically get rules. Political power is negative 200%. Uh, rule, research speed, however, is increased by 5%. So basically the ruler doesn't have a whole lot of power. That's cool. We can go with that. So I now have access to all of this stuff. What the hell is a cyber democracy? Involving high-tech achievements of IT and mass communication to democracy to create the most efficient bureaucratic system. But such dependence on technology can occasionally result in cyber crime outbreaks. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Um, I just realized I can't... Two seconds, two seconds. I can't see the chat. I just realized I can't see the chat. Give me a minute. <laughs> Got so excited about starting Solaris, I forgot to open the chat window. Just bear with me, sorry. Can I change the screen resolution? Um... No, this is <laughs> this is my this is for my ultra wide. Why? What's happening? Is it basically just um, getting stuck somewhere? Is it like squeezing on one side or something for you? I'm really glad I have to chat in the stream because that would sound really weird if I was speaking about something else. Squeezing in the middle. Uh, so, like vertical squeezing or horizontal squeezing? Horizontal. Okay. Let me see if I can fix this. Oh. 
Also, hi Ratatouf, hope you've been well. <laughs> oh yeah, that is... That is squeezing, isn't it? Um, How's that? Is that looking a little better? The... Hold on, that's probably what I need to do. I probably need to bring it down that way first and then bring it that way. It's still squeezing it a bit, isn't it? Might be the stream. Might might just be the stream how I've got it configured. Well, it's got some all right. Now if we give it some width that way and that way. That's looking a little better. It's not perfect, but it's looking a bit better. That's probably the best I can do without restarting the stream. I might just leave it for now and I'll have a look at it tomorrow um, before I stream again. And yes, I'm going to democracy. I'm going to democracy for the first the first time. We'll go to democracy, but we might change as as we play. We'll see how we go. So anyway, uh, we need to pick our civics. So we get three picks. I believe that's with the mod. I don't. Oh, actually, it might be three civ picks now. Again, it's been a little while since I played the game. Um, so I can now choose a whole bunch of different civics. Some of them are going to be modded bits and pieces. Others are going to be ones specific to specific to uh, direct democracy. So there's various bits and pieces I could choose. So trade, no, I don't think it's really trade. Social state in this society, the state traditionally plays a key role in the protection and promotion of the, eh, a bit boring. Uh, Republican ideals, civic virtue, where in ordinary centuries we primarily concerned with the matters of the state as a public affair and generally involved in the political life at some level. Well, that seems to be the case here. Um, so we can be original people. Or none of the fallen empires during the Great War, remnants of the original empire escaped extinction and survived, having lost... Ah, oh, so it's like Homeworld. Yes. That sounds cool. Um, and I think we might... I don't really consider ourselves having a, an efficient bureaucracy. Um, however, shaping and adapting stuff... I think that sounds interesting. I think that sounds good. I think the EMU would be the type of people to, um, to basically... Take care of their things, or potentially free haven. Yeah, actually, that's probably not a bad idea. That's a potential. That's a potential. Uh, yeah, let's go free haven. Let's go free haven as well. I'll we'll get tons of tons of random peeps dropping in. So uh, that's our civics. That's probably the next bit. Then you choose the voice of whoever you want. As the learned say, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is also mine. Thanks, thanks. Just needed that. Mm -hmm. The Lord are very friendly creatures. Oh, that sounds that sounds pathetic. That's brilliant. Uh, so we are the Emu Confederation of Colonies. Our adjective is Emu. Um, of course, you've got the various pictures and so on. That one is always going to be the Emu symbol. Uh, and a bunch of ships. Uh, I'm guessing this must. Oh, it's the original. I know what the yeah. It's the original. It's the original people. It's from the what the. Um, this must be from the uh, ultimate Zenith of Fallen Empires ultimate mod makes sense that makes sense uh, I think we'll just stick with the avian ships for the moment 
And lastly, we choose our ruler. Um, and for some reason, my traits are highlighted. Oh, I need punctual. Oof, okay, I'll need to have a look at that. Uh, Fez of Agni, yeah, it's all fine. You can basically just choose the color of your starting leader, which doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Now, what is going on here? I need punctual, do I? Doesn't exist. That appears to be... Appears to be a mod bug. Mod bug. It's okay, it's okay. I'll just have to ditch whatever it was. Oh, you must need... Okay, I think I know what that is. I think I know what it is. If we ditch... No. No. It's a mod bug. It's a mod bug. Definitely a mod bug. Uh, what was that? That was communal, wasn't it? Okay, we can't play Homeworld. So sorry, we'll just go with it. Ecological Engineers and get going. So once you've done all that, you can of course click next, next, next. Traits are... We don't need punctual anymore, so it can go. And we're good. So we sit, hit save, and then we can start. Alrighty. So again, Stellaris. Masses of different options you get. So if you played any of the other um, Paradox games, they'll give you multiple... Generally speaking, it's a map of Earth. This, however, is a galaxy, so you can choose whatever. So I'm, I'm normally happy with the base setting. I'm probably just going to keep it for medium stars for the moment. I quite like spirals as well. Um, I generally keep it at this... I mean, you can put it at 1%. This, I find, just means the game goes a little bit faster. And again, I don't want to be playing a playthrough of this forever because I probably want to do another playthrough of playing a military fanatic destroyer race or something. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll just do it this way. Uh, five by Howard Awards, that's a bit high. I think we'll probably go... It can be a bit lower. Uh, previous civilization, so just how many you find. Crisis strength, so crises are basically things that happen towards the end of the game. So see that end game start year, um, and will be bad. Difficulty is captain, that should be fine. I'm uh, scaling difficulty off, yeah, I'll just leave that off for the moment. Oh, hold on. No, I'm going to turn that on. From memory, after one of the previous patches, the AI is terrible. So I'll just stick it on, just to hopefully get something that's at least a little bit... A little bit different. I generally turn off advanced neighbors because that can end the game pretty quickly. I'm not going to have Iron Man just because I will save just in case my computer crashes um, and various other bits and pieces. Cool, let's go. Let's get started. Yeah, I think that screen's it's looking alright to me. It's a, li it's a little skewed still, but it's looking alright. Why is this running so slowly? Yeeks. Sorry, please bear with me. There is something strange going on. I did do a brief test stream of this the other day and it seemed to actually go all right, but do not know what is going on this time. Come on, come on. Sorry, my computer is essentially frozen at the moment. It's, uh... <laughs> kind of detracts from my good news that I'm actually getting a new video card on Saturday. And I think I really need it if this is what I'm getting. Alright, so, 
This is all the various mod stuff and basically where I get to change some options. Uh, so we could change all the guaranteed habitable worlds from the ideal class to random planets within the same category. Uh, sure. It's probably going to make the game a hell of a lot harder. Giga Structures Configuration Menu. Uh, all Giga Structures active. No, that's all cool. So just leave that on. Attention, Real Space Now is a website. Initiate a new frontiers are in the Steam Workshop. Yeah, okay, cool. We don't need that. That's just telling us it's loaded. Difficult choice. Um, oh, okay. It might just be might just be all the stuff loading. That could be just what was slowing down. Uh, so I'm just constantly talking about this, and we must understand how this relates. Catastrophes, they are inevitable. The galaxy will surely give us a surprise, which we are least waiting for. It's only a matter of time, but our worldview will determine how we will endure these hardships stoically and meekly, tempering our will or shutting our mind in an attempt to protect it, pretending that nothing is happening. What the? What the hell? Um, sure, we we'll must accept the inevitable. That sounded somewhat poetic. All right, so we've got some research already completed. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, it might be because we um, think it was the Civic we chose. So yeah, I don't know why this is a bit slow. I It's probably not going to be the greatest stream, um, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Hopefully video card tomorrow on Friday, sorry, Saturday will solve all these problems. I, I honestly do not know why this is playing so badly. Can I just change basic stuff or something? Maybe just change it to low just to actually get... This is awful. It's barely playable. I'm getting, I think, three frames per second. Come on. You can do it. Maybe it's the multi-sample level. The problem is I updated my graphics drivers the other day, which I probably shouldn't have seen. I was getting a new graphics card. And for some reason... It's decided it's going to fix all the graphics in all of my games. Ugh. Good eye. Good eye. This is going so well, isn't it? Going so well. So anyway, it's Stellaris. This is what it looks like. <laughs> So this is basically uh, my starting solar system. So up there is it's basically little things telling me that research stuff and tasks are ready to go. Uh, there will be additional stuff that comes up there. It's basically a notifications bar. Um, further up here, we have all of our resources and there are loads, loads of resources. Um, energy, minerals, we'll, we'll get to all of them as we go. Um, down this sidebar is basically just an overview of my empire, which is kind of small at the moment and if I click this button here I'll go to the galaxy map and I can see the entirety of the galaxy isn't it cool isn't it really cool ah uh, stuff this I'm restarting the game <laughs> this is just so ridiculous So bad. So bad. Uh, Alright, we might just drop Bloom as well then. Please hold. Wow, that was slow. Really need that new video card. Really, really need that new video card. This loads 10 times faster now, then I'll know it was definitely a problem. Come on, you can do it. So I believe, um, I believe we need to say, um, I think there's, oh, cool. Design name Supremacy, Artillery Light Carrier Vessel, hmm, disappeared. And a giant alien waygate thing. That honestly reminds me of Shadows of the Colossus. Wow, 
it's taking its time. This is just ridiculous. This was like really quick when I was trying it. And it's just absolutely carved it. Is anyone trying to hack me? Is that what's going on here? The font of knowledge. So I think this is, I think this is from, this is either from the Zenith of Fallen Empires or it's from the, um, whatchamacallum, alien, uh, ancient artifacts or ancient relics one. Some vistas on an alien world. This is so sad. Streaming for nearly 40 minutes and we barely got like three seconds of gameplay in. It's wonderful, wonderful. Didn't save. Now we find out if it works. The music is just so, so good. Look at that speed speed cool awesome right welcome to Stellaris up here is our bar with various bits and pieces that tells us when things are, occur here is an overview of our empire here is all of your resources here's where you hit the game to actually start playing and this is the galaxy map let's have a look at our galaxy so Stellaris, well, look, it was changed a while back. Um, if you look, it's it's changed a bit. So these are the hyperspace lanes. So what you can do, hyperspace lanes basically define your territory. You can go and you can claim these these systems um, to basically expand your empire. Um, the hyperspace lanes, though, um, make natural choke points and so on at certain points on the map. So you generally want to observe early on where you're going to want to expand to. Again, I'm going to be role-playing the EMU a little bit, so the EMU are uh, very much disparate type of colonizers. They'll basically just go out wherever and colonize. Um, but I'm probably going to aim to go to, to go towards those two, because those two look like good, solid points and at least that one though i think i'll be able to actually get a bit further out like that 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 space is is a definite and i'm pretty sure that just goes up to that little arc there i could probably move all the way down there or there depending on how i go and that's sort of natural security so you'll end up with uh at the start of the game you start with a little fleet of uh three corvettes which are the midnight tenu class northwind harrier whitetail osric and the war akabu whatever the hell an akamu is um, here we have the Swiftwing Data, which is my science ship, led by my scientist Moonin Tekalot. Oh, that's just great. He's an archaeologist. So, what you do with science ships is you go and explore areas. You can't build in them until you've explored the systems. So, he's just going to go start exploring. I'm going to go straight up for this one first. And this guy, he's a little uh, mechanic ship, um, construction ship, called the Black Seric. So, let's go have a quick look at our home planet. Oh, we've got a nice blue star called Egg. Isn't that cute? Um, and we have our Emu, which is the capital of the Emu Empire. 
Here we have our planet. So there's loads of stuff on this planet. This is some new stuff. I haven't seen this. Automation on and off. Okay, interesting. I didn't know there was... Oh, automation must be new, I believe. Colony decisions. So you can do various different bits and pieces. This is where you build your buildings. This is where you build your districts. So your districts are where your people live and where it gives them basic jobs. Your buildings generally do a much higher level of thing. Um, additionally, you'll also have tile blockers on most planets, which are generally just old... Well, in this case, they're basically old industrial wastelands and slums, which I can clear by spending energy, which is your currency. Uh, additionally, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, additionally, you can do like in political decisions and so on. Essentially, at the moment, my place is relatively basic. It's got 10 housing um, available, uh, 8 amenities available, which keep your people happy and housed. Uh, no crime, which is good, and a 58% stability. So everyone's a bit shitty with it, one another, but no one's quite willing to kill each other yet. So at the moment, um, my energy credits are actually low. My minerals are decent, but not fantastic. So I'm going to look at trying to get myself some more energy credits. And how I'm going to do that is, if I see here, this system has available to it energy credits, minerals, um, and various other tech bits. And I'm basically going to go and build a mining station to mine some of that with my loads of minerals. So that's my minerals. I'm going to build a mining station. That will give me an income of an additional four. And I'm also going to choose some text. So you get a choice of three texts for each of the various research fields. Uh, I'm going to start right off the bat of going with uh, physics research. So my physics research is to increase my physics research. Good, good choice. Um, farming subsidies. No, I'm going to go society research. And why not? We'll do, the, do all three the same way. Finally, I turn off pause and speed the game up. And save it. So I'm not going to be reloading games. I'm, it's more that I'm just going to, well, unless something absolutely goes pear-shaped, like I get a corrupt save game or something, which has never happened to me. Um, but that's what I can do. So, yeah. Um, so I won't, yes, yeah, I, won't, I won't reload games or anything. There he goes, flying off. He's jumped in and then he will go around scanning planets. You can zoom right in as well, which is really cool. Move the camera around. Do I ever really? Look at that. That's that's the re this is the real universe mod. It's just fantastic. Oh god, that voice is so annoying. Uh, where do I choose it? So the construction of my mining ship is complete, and as you can see, my energy is now going way up. Uh, why it's jumping so far is probably because there's a few other bits and pieces. I my energy probably wasn't actually that bad, but look, we did it anyway. We did it anyway. So I'm going to go to my spaceport. Uh, which basically you build a station to take control of the sector and my station here is my spaceport um, and I will basically go and get myself um, some more corvettes I think so they are built with alloys which are a special type of metal um, meanwhile I've still got tons of minerals so I might as well build some more mining stay uh, yeah sorry no mining stations but I can build a research station which will basically increase my research how am I doing? I can now start clearing some blockers from Emu, which is what I'm going to do. Construction complete. Construction complete. And then we are going to build... Now, you can generally try and design... So I'm just going to pause the game quickly. So you generally try and look at what you, plan, what you want on your planet. So often you clear your tile blockers and you might expose additional slots and so on, but generally it's worth specializing your planet along one line. Um, your starting planet will always be sort of unspecialized, but at the moment, it's not in a terrible problem. I've got unemployed workers, though, so I do need some more jobs. Uh, at the moment, I'm going to increase my... Ugh, I will increase my energy amount once I can actually afford it. Mainly because I want my currency up a little bit. I will eventually need to start getting my minerals up, but at the moment, currency is what I want. So, I've now finished exploration of this sector because it's in that bright white font. Um, and it's got one little crappy physics research thing. But that's okay. That's okay. So I'm going to get my construction ship and fly out here to build a star base. He can't currently, but I'll at least move him out there to start him moving. Warp jumps do take a little bit of time, so because you've got to go to the edge of the system and actually jump out. Okay, traditions. So I've got my first tradition, and wow, look at all the traditions. Ah, so normally there's only 10 of these, um, and there is freaking masses of them because of that mod. And there is so much stuff you can do. So much stuff. So... It's, it's just got some such awesome stuff. Like, it's got, like... 
it's got Mechanicum, which is basically a Warhammer 40,000 reference, as is Administratum. Um, and it's just got a whole bunch of other ones as well, like Greed, Harmony, Justice, which sound like, like a bunch of these. I think there are a number of alien en en enemies in anime that basically sounds like mystery. Woo! Uh, collective individual so this one's actually two it's just got two different things depending on what way you choose to take it so um we could go i don't know what we're gonna go actually i've got no freaking idea um i'm thinking academic schools expansion yep we're gonna go expansion to start with which look is a traditional one it's nothing particularly fantastic but i think it's a good one to go with um to start with oh these are the relics mm, cool yeah, there's archaeological relics you can find now. I haven't, again, haven't played with them yet, so I'm not sure what they are. What can we build? I probably should get them all. So, yep. Yeah. You can now build a star base. Go, be free. The one with the universe. So I'm going to build here an auto... Thon monument. So what this does is it will increase my unity. You can see the little symbols there. Uh, also society research. It does consume. It does take up consumer goods here. So you essentially converts consumer goods into unity. Everyone thinks. Oh, so I found an anomaly. So what an anomaly is is crap. Um, an anomaly is something funky I found in space. It could. It, it can't kill my scientists anymore. It used to be able to, um, but it does take. It does take time to research. This takes one thousand days. No, I will leave that for the moment. I do not need you spending three years looking at that anomaly. Once your scientists get better at it, they will be able to look at the stuff a bit quicker. At the moment, my scientists are not better at it, so they can... Anomaly found. That's a bit better. One year, challenging anomaly. It's It takes a little while, but I might as well have a look. And it is mysterious structures. Impressive structures. Littering Lingol 4's surface practically begging for some archaeological work. Well... Yeah, let's do that. We might find some archaeological stuff. I said, don't know what that does yet. Wouldn't mind seeing. Wouldn't mind seeing at all. I'm going to go back and build a mining station to increase my mining capacity. And we're just going to keep moseying along, really. Um, so early game is all about exploration. Um, it's all about exploration, finding new stuff, expanding your empire. So I finished that, and so it doesn't currently have any... Where's the jobs? I think there's a job screen I can bring up. Where's the job screen? Ah, oh, here it is. This is the job screen. Uh, so basically this here will have the various things. So I've got currently two administrator rules, which are producing unity, but consuming food and um, food and consumer goods. Specialists, which do various things, and your generic workers, which do the, the basic jobs. Um, they updated all of how planetary economics works so basically people are in a thing called a strata and they'll move up and down depending on what's available to them kind of works alright um, so new colony start with additional pop or pop growth speed or starbase influence cost so at the moment I'm looking at building starbases I'm not looking at building a planet anytime soon I will probably get these hopefully before I start colonizing because that does give you a large bonus if you played Civilization V, they're basically like the traditions in that. It's it's quite similar, actually. Edic Monolithic. Lingol IV is uninhabited, indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall cenotaphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, evidently placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The monolith's flowing lines deftly chart a history so fantastical it must be surely be fictional. Surely. We're going to image them, which is going to give us some engineering research. Different a different um different political ethics and so on will change some of that so i'm not sure you can but say if you're a spiritual it might say hey you can worship this now so they've found that alien lives exist um and everyone is going crazy about it crazy like a fox uh so in this case i will also increase that again because i don't have another planet just yet i'm gonna need to sort of use this as my main production world it's probably not the perfect way uh, next, I promise, Ratatouk, the next the next playthrough of this will be the Fnatic Devourer race. I, I haven't actually, I've never actually played a full nom 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 race, and I can actually do it using these traditions. Um, there's like swarm and stuff that you get when you're playing a. It doesn't have it, but this is this is swarm if you're playing it. And there's a few other ones that I think can eat people. 
I do definitely want to do that. I just wanted to do this one as a starting one, just because I, whenever I play this right, this species, it goes all. It, it's really funny. It ends up being a really funny game because these guys just suck at doing anything generally. So it's more funny when they actually succeed. How's my food going? My food is going well, so it seems fine. Yeah, every, everything's going pretty pretty smoothly. Pretty smoothly. Ancient survey marker. A small, short-range transmitter has been located on the surface of Lingor 1. It appears to be an ancient survey marker placed here years ago to mark a large deposit of precious materials. Cool. So that was that anomaly. It basically found that there was some extra stuff on that one. Which doesn't really look like that Ice World picture. Hmm... Maybe the ice caps. Maybe it's got ice caps. Nope. Nope. Does not have ice caps. It's a lie. It's a lie. It also like tells you everything about the stars. It's really cool. Really cool. Is that a graphical glitch? No, it's just where to go. So I'm chugging along pretty well now. I'm actually going to grab some more ships because I'm doing pretty well with that. So my basic corvettes, um, eventually as I start to research more tech, I'd actually turn that off, um, I can build ships in the ship designer. So this is my starting corvette and I can basically upgrade it with various weapons and so on. At the moment it's got a couple of mass drivers and a laser um, and looks like a weird dolphin thing. Um, so yeah. My patrol craft, so this is used with that uh, defense mod that I mentioned. Um, basically that's that's something that will be built on my planets to defend them if once i build a planetary defense base so research has started to be completed so what can we do here we can do you know, like better weapons better armor or more corvette hull points i'm pretty sure the corvette hull points is better right right at this point in time though it sucks later down the track um, at the moment, I don't think I'm going to be getting into a war, so I think I might go with the coil gun. I, I'm probably going to have some pirate problems soon, but hopefully that won't crap up just at the moment. Uh, upkeep, administrative capacity, and colonization. I'm going to go with the colonization fee for the moment. So administrative capacity is something new that was brought in. Basically, what it is is that your empire gets penalties the bigger it is without having proper administrative capacity. Whenever I play these guys, I spread everywhere because they sort of demand it and I end up having massive massive administrative problems which again is funny yeah I think the last time I played these guys I ended up with about 300 extra administration factor yeah, it was nuts very funny had to be there had to be there I always regret not starting streaming when I first started playing Stellaris because honestly some of the crazy crap that happens with this type of thing is it's very much an emergent narrative the Yacht Empire. We've re recovered artifacts from the ancient alien civilization on TFBK-14. Oh, that's a great name. Great name. Uh, scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly six million years ago. Based on the age of the artifacts, the aliens called themselves the Yacht and appear to have been very large and flat arthropod analogs. Seems that an individual length, or indiv single individual could reach a length of nearly 100 meters as an adult, and it was apparently exceedingly rare for more than two or three Yacht to travel aboard the same starship. That's crazy. Um... That is not one of the new ones, I don't think. I think it's one of the old ones. But I got an artifact. I've never gotten an artifact before. But that's something new. So, we've got a new research. So, we can do hydroponic farms. Eh, eh, it's not so great. Uh, monthly unity plus two. That's probably the best one. Um, planetary unification. Additional edicts campaign. Uh, I'll do it. Turn it pop growth speed. My pop growth speed has already increased. So, I could probably get that research a bit later. I think the... Um, Planetary unification. Ancient warring tribes, historical nations in conflict, now unified in empire. We must not, will not crumble. So we just had an election, um, and we've re-elected Feathers of Magneta? Yeah. Who's my leader? They're an industrialist and charismatic. Go them. Go them. No one apparently opposed them. Cool. Not complaining. Not complaining. Do I have a governor here? Oh yeah, yeah, it's Carthy Kotal. Go Carthy, you're still alive. So we have loads of money at the moment, so I'm going to clear those remaining blocker tiles. Get myself full, full size of the planet. 
Um, and here we can look at building something else. So alloy foundries get me more allies. So these are all basically production stuff. So this is that planetary defense force base I mentioned. Uh, planetary defense ship right store two. So they basically take some of your alloys as well as money. But they produce unity and engineering research. So they do actually produce some stuff plus fighters to defend your planet. Uh, they do cost a little bit. I'm not sure I want to get lose my alloy production this soon in. Uh, research labs will increase my research production. Actually, at the moment, I actually think that's probably the best one. Um, or I get a stronghold. Stronghold adds unity and produces soldiers, which increase my naval capacity. What's my naval capacity? 7 and 20. Up there. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Or I just get money. <laughs> Let's get a stronghold. Let's get a stronghold. It's probably not necessary at the moment, but hey, the Emu do have an army. So he's investigating that. While he's investigating that, I am going to go build the star base. Star base. We can finally expand. This this place had so much stuff in it. It's got trade goods. Wow, it's got crap loads of stuff. It's a good system. It's a good system. So this will increase my Empire Sprawl because I'm going to be getting yet more um, systems. What was previously thought to be an assorted mountain in the southern hemisphere of Lingol 5 has been identified as a massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated to 3.4 billion years old. But our scientists have ruled out that Lingol 5 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history. Science officer Moonin Telecot has prepared a special research project. Ooh, well, I think I, I think you know, I'm gonna do that special research project. Why not? Let's let's research some stuff. So there's a situation log. It's got various bits and pieces. So I can investigate a giant skeleton, um, and I've got a science in science ship in orbit, and it finishes in 180 days. So go for it. It's just peaceful. You can just listen, look. Stare at the stars, listening to cool music. As your empire slowly grows. Construction complete. Construction complete. So we've now got full of that. We've got multiple jobs. We've got housing. We're low on amenities. Uh, okay, so if we get Clark's produce amenities, don't we? Yeah, Clark's produce amenities. So let's get some Clark's. And we've got that system. Awesome. So I'm going to now build the research station. So you can right click on this to actually allow yourself to build basically all of them if you've got the minerals. Uh, I don't. <laughs> At the moment I can't build all mining stations. But I will build my one research station because I might as well. Research complete. Special project complete. Um, we have concluded the creature served as some kind of organic starship. Hmm. Much smaller bones from at least three separate species were found within the larger scale, and we assume they came from members of the crew. Suffered so catastrophic damage and crash landed. Well, we cannot begin to understand it. Um, the study of the bones alone is substantially to be our knowledge. So it adds, basically, again, research to the planet, um, and it also gives my scientist some experience, which will mean he's faster at learning other stuff. Physics finally researched. Uh, so we can get shields, blue lasers, or fusion reactors. Yeah, that one's a tough one. Um, I think I'm just going to go with the fusion reactor actually at the moment. Just get ourselves a power supply so if anything cool comes up in research that I need power on my ships for. It's probably the way to go. So construction is now complete and I should have, now have enough to build loads of... Loads and loads and loads of um, mining stations. Uh, what's this? Pop growth speed increased. That's not too bad, actually. Might just Starbase influence cost courier network. We'll go with the, we'll go with pop growth speed because it'll actually affect my home world as well. Do, do, do. So I haven't actually upgraded anything to a starbase yet. These are just outposts. If I upgrade to a starbase, I can start building modules. I'm actually going to upgrade this place one to a starbase. Oh, uh, no. Yes. Yes, I will. 
so I can get the trade goods. Because once I've got the trade goods, I can ship them all back to Emu and make money. Trade goods make money. So while this is all going on, we're going to have a quick look at our, at our uh, policies and edicts. Oh, sorry, that's our edicts. We want to look at our policies. So this is the policies you've got available to you to make a government different. Now, the, again, mods have been chucked in here, so some of this stuff doesn't normally exist. Uh, so exact, for example, I can increase uh, my environmental... Re um, I can increase my environmental regulation, um, which allows my some of my special resources, which I don't have access to yet. Oh, there's a comet. It's a good omen. Hooray, comet. Um, which basically means various, uh, my spe certain specialists consume one less minerals. So that's actually pretty good. That's pretty good. Reduced, um, however, or alternatively, I could go eat against ecology and increase my production rate. As I've already said, I'm an ecologist. I'll probably go with this. You... Transport and logistics, uh, so we can again do like civilian or military transport is what we do. Um, I'm going to leave that neutral. I don't think there's a reason to change that. Personal weapons. Hell yeah. Guns. Guns for everyone. Hmm. Drugs. Drugs. No, no drugs. Telecommunications. So I can focus telecommunications on civilian or military usage. Again, I'm going to leave that one for now. Mass media, yeah, it's definitely going to be free. Yeah, definitely free. Definitely free. Authority stands, so I can't change any of this. Um, I could make it a public health care. Mm, okay, clinics. Yes, let's do public education. That looks good. Uh, that one I can't change. Purge is prohibited. Slavery is prohibited, which is fine. All this stuff is... So trade policy. This is where the trade comes in. So I could change it to, for example, trade value as earned unity as well as credits. At the moment, I'm just going to leave it with credits because I don't actually have a lot m enough of it. So here's where I can change other bits and pieces. Strict rationing or nutritional penalties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I'll probably leave all that stuff. I don't think I really need to fiddle with it. Um, I might now... We'll be indiscriminate bombardus for the moment. Might change that later. Uh, no, you can leave that be. Thank you. Level 10 anomaly. I've never seen a level 10 anomaly. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Tell us a naval officer uncovered with a very strange looking picture. Uh, <laughs> Estri Simu, the naval officer in charge of the Egg Star Base, is impressed visiting Umar Naval Star so I can hire them. Um, a level 2 admiral with the traits talented aggressive. Uh, sure, we'll begin, begin the good old How to Worlds event chain, which is like one of the first event chains they ever had. Yeah, excuse me. It's getting late. Getting late. Uh, yeah, let's recycle stuff. Um, so, admirals, basically, you get various leaders. So, I have played around a little around with the governor just before, but in this case, I'm going to go um, hire this admiral. So, they are now in charge of my fleet with the traits. Talented, increasing their experience gain, and aggressive, increasing their fire rate and sublight speed of my ships, which for corvettes is perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine to research. Go knock yourself out. Another research station. So this this starbase is now finished part of construction, so I can now start putting stuff in. I'm going to chuck in a trade hub and probably another trade hub if I wanted to. I will probably alter this a little bit and I can downgrade my space up later, so probably don't need two. Yeah. How trade hubs work is they collect trade from various areas. So I could, for example, have just increased and put another trade hub on EMU and it would reach to that system, but I'm not going to do it. Gilded Cage. The mineral construct is, for lack of better term, a room made out of the same type of minerals in common use in the EU Confederation of Colonies. The construct is a hollow icosidodecahedron. Yep. Uh, resonance scans indicate that it is mostly hollow and was likely inhabited by some point in time and lacks its pristine exterior. Ugh. Interior is in complete disarray, possibly the result of an intentional act of sabotage. 
Sign off as a moon at Talcott reports this makes it difficult to learn anything of value from the constructs inside of the stress of the engineering that we're involved in creating our shell eminently capable of withstanding the stresses of deep space must have been tremendously advanced. I don't think I've seen this one before. And I'm not sure what this is. I have a feeling it's referring to some scientific, like some sci-fi thing, but I'm just not sure what it is. Construction complete. Woo, good construction, dude. You've constructed everything. So here's my research. I've got decent society, decent engineering, and pretty slow physics. Those are all my special stuff. Stellarite energy. Hmm. 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 They have a capacity from soldier jobs. Food. Let's get some food. We're going to need it. Um, we will reduce my um, galactic ambitions. And so that will also. What does that do? Banner of our Grand Empire. So Starpy's upgrade is reduced. Oh, I haven't actually gone and had a look at. Sorry, I'm bouncing around a bit, aren't I? Relics. Sell to private collector. So I could sell my one relic. I could celebrate diversity. Okay. I could discover a precursor in sight. Or I could exhibit on a planet. Hmm, interesting. Oh, so that's how you could check the precursor sites. So I haven't actually found a relic, I've found an artifact. Looks almost like um, the old WoW system for archaeology. Don't forget my dragon. I think I got my sand dragon, my time dragon, I think, eventually. Unless I was like two pieces short or something and really irritated. Ooh, Horizon. Faint signal almost lost the gamma ray flashes in the black hole. Faint but unmistakably artificial. This raises intriguing possibilities for our scientists. I don't think I've ever got this. Abandoned gateway. We've located what appears to be an ancient subspace gateway near the Gay 3 Maelstrom. Um, network of similar stations. Right, so what these are is um, basically gateways uh, they're artificial gateways so that's actually an old gate it's one of the more powerful ones um that basically you can you can both build them later down the track and also use them to travel instantaneously so they're like a wormhole gate l gates in particular not only into the gate network but they also go out to a little area called the l cluster outside of no outside of regular space so i've looked at the gal through maelstrom and it's basically done now I got the horizon signal. I don't think I've ever gotten the horizon signal. That book came out as a free patch, I think. Okay, I've got some new stuff now. So minerals from miners, army damage plus minerals from jobs. Or I could get a nebula refinery by to allow me to gain uh, minerals out of nebulas. Hmm. It's also got mining station output plus 10%. All three of these are good. Let's go powered access count to start with. Main reason is it targets jobs, not just mining jobs. The horizon signal gravity is desire. Science of the Moon in Telecote reports the signal was unexpectedly easy to decipher. But their team has spent considerable time confirming that it is not a hoax. It is a repeating half coherent message in the Emu Mu language, something like a poem. It repeats the phrases Gravity is desire and time is sight. It encodes coordinates near the black hole and ends with a dedication by name to the science officer who adds dispassionately they have confirmed that the signal has been radiating into interstellar space since before their birth. In fact, the signal may predate our uh, civilization. Well, um... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a look at this. We learn and we go on. As the ISS Swiftwing data approaches the coordinates specified by the signal, it begins to report spatial distortions and curious lensing effects, a rich stream of valuable data. Then the transmission becomes distorted. What happens next is analysed exhaustively. The excitement in Science Officer Moon and Telecot's voice threatens to... Uh, to... Tortons to fear. Um, as the ship... Shouldn't that be Titans to... Mm, I suppose Torton, yeah. Fear as the ship's hull struggles under increasingly exotic conditions. The ship tr it triggers a distress call. Moon Teller cries out, The worm, or perhaps the worm. Then all transmissions end. No trace of the ISS Swiftwing data is ever found, and no further transmissions, no debris, and the space of those coordinates in is innocuous and utterly free of distortions. But the data they sent back has advanced our physics research dramatically. Perhaps it was worth their lives. Ugh. Okay, I just lost my science ship. That sucks. Um, as well as as well as that good little um, good little emu on top of it, uh, so I'm going to need to build, rebuild a science ship. 
and they've been lost. They've been lost to whatever the hell was here. So, as I mentioned earlier, this was a, this is a really good spot because it basically gives me those two systems and basically cuts off access this way. It might be that I can go a little further down here, but I think at the moment just taking this spot's the best spot. And we're currently campaigning to elect a new leader. And look, it's Feathers of Magneto again. Who would have guessed? I don't think we have any new leaders to um, basically elect until we get a little bit further on. So we've got a science ship, we'll never go hire a scientist. Leader experience can, yeah, I think you're gonna need it, man. I think you're definitely gonna need it. Okay, so this looks like it bounces down to about there where it splits, so that's where I'm gonna go next. Horizon signal reprise. The black hole in Gareth and Manchester active again. Once again, a looping signal flickers in the darkness at the edge of normal space. The sun is an acoustic message in code and signal. It sounds very much like Moon and Telecot's voice. What was shall be. Moon and Telecot in tones. What shall be was. Then the same coordinates as the first signal. The coordinates where Moon and Telecot was lost. What the media has christened the exit point. They say a name. Sia Skyner. Hmm. I could rig the ship stripes to there tonight. Or I could ignore it. Or I could... I think C.S. Skyner would volunteer. We're crazy people who are curious all the time, so I think I think we're going to go in. Is this just going to continue to eat? Oh, okay. The time the ship is running fully automated. C.S. Skyner is the only crew member aboard as it approaches the exit points. The telemetry stream fills up with fascinating data. Once again, space flexes. Gravity uncoils. C.S. Skyner reads all off the headline data, echoing the telemetry. They're commendably calm that we've sent a professional. It takes a little while for anyone to realize that something is peculiar about the timing. Sea Skyner is no longer echoing the data, they're predicting it. The telemetry disagrees, but only for a few seconds until it catches up. The monitoring team is just reporting that the prediction interval is increasing when Sea Skyner says, wondering, I'm through. It's dark there, that's not a problem. We can live in the dark. I never thought of that, but of course we can live here forever, if the worm will only wait. At that moment, the signal cuts out and the ship disappears from our team's sensors. Uh, okay, this is horrible, this is regrettable, this is fascinating. Hmm. Well, we do care about the individual, so I think, I think it's probably more a regrettable type thing. I mean, we do find it fascinating because we're super curious, but I think that's probably the right what I'm saying. I don't have enough money to hire a scientist, so that's unfortunately going to be a bit slow for a little while. A little bit slow. Well, that thing is just creepy. Eating people. Research complete. What's this planet doing? Still need more amenities. Probably need to wait until how many? Until we get thirty? We're at twenty-nine pot. Once, so once we get to thirty, I'll get an amenities-producing building. Should make life a little bit easier for us. Automatic exploration, this is so cool, but I don't need it just yet. Research speed, however, is awesome. And we shall now complete our courier network, uh, giving us administrative capacity, which will complete our first tradition, allowing us to take an ascension perk. So ascension perk to do the funky stuff, um, very powerful abilities. And so I will need to decide what I want to take. Uh, executive vigor, duration, imperial prerogative, which increases that. Mastery of nature, which is pretty awesome. Uh, which permanently increases the number of districts the planet can support. That is really good, that one. Um, one vision is also not too bad. Tech oh, rare. Okay, okay. Um, or interstellar dominion. Hmm. I'm going to go technological ascendancy. I want to get more tech. I think that's the one to go for. Again, we're curious. We're the ones who are going to be super big on tech because we're curious. I haven't got the pirates, the pirates yet. Maybe it's because I haven't got a second planet. I don't know. I haven't even seen another planet. So 
Something really sparse. Construction complete. So I hope everyone is cruising into a nice Friday, uh, if you haven't already. Um, should have be a good good weekend, I think. Good weekend. Oh God, again. The horizon signal, the trine, the quine, the trine. Once again, the horizon signal in Gathering Master Active is up to its game. Once again, the transmission includes the exit points coordinates. It's signed with the private comm keys of Moon and Telcots and CS Skyner. But this time it's a generative text program written in an elderly programming language that creates what appear to be love poems. Love poems directed to Carethel Makako. Makoko? <laughs> They're honestly not very good love poems, but it, it is, our scientists agree, quite difficult to generate love poems procedurally. Quite unusual for a black hole to send love poems. So really, thanks. What do we employ you guys for? Um, <laughs> that's nicely distinct there. Uh, send it with a drive rig to blow this sinister, ridiculous, and sinister. Let it go. Look, again, we're still curious. I'm going to send Kerthel Malocco. Why not? Let's just Let's just give it a try. Rise and signal where the end comes from. This will be the end of me, he says at the briefing for launch. I know I won't come back, but I think I always knew this would happen. Whatever is in the hole has been waiting for us for a long, long time. I think it's been waiting for me since before I was born. Once again, the single pilot ship approaches the exit point. Once again, space balls like a fever. Again, our sensor rays soak up fascinating data. This time, Kerthel Makoko is silent. The telemetry becomes intermittent and then it too is silent. The ship has reached the exit point. The conditions around it are returning to normal. Nothing has happened. Nothing, the monitoring team muttered furiously. The ship is different. In fact, it's a different ship. Its moon and Telecot's vessel lost these years past, drifting now away from the exit point. A salvage team finds it pristine and empty. No trace of crew and no sign of violence, but there's a journal entry in Miller Telecot's name titled What Was Will Be. Our scientists review it nervously. Impossible one says, I hope so, says another. The ship is renamed the Foundling and returned to service. The signal dead or sleeping says nothing ever again. And yet this may not be the end. So I've gained a, a research option called Entropic Reversion. I've lost three scientists to it. Uh, but hey, look. May, maybe it will do be good for us. Um, so what do I want now? Pop grow speed. Our Ford Trading Company. This is two. That, that one I want. Uh, leave me for now. Let's probably go do that level two one. So we've got the foundling. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with you just yet. Probably, probably could stick a. Well, I can't afford it, but I'll stick probably a scientist in you at some point. Again, that's something that probably could be taken out of context. Oh, I think met, met some aliens. Use of alien alien ships. Uh, so I can go here and investigate the alpha aliens. And also, okay, weird and creepy. So I'm going to start researching this. If I get it before they do, then I will get some influence. And I can now, I've got that open. I will now build some luxury residences, which just give me straight up amenities, which is what I need. Construction complete. Might as well increase the, that as well. The Loop Temple, signs on the stone. Archaeologists have found a forgotten temple in the remote highlands at Emu, buried for centuries, but recently exposed by an earthquake. Dating techniques suggest it's a pre-industrial relic hand hewn from volcanic rock. However, the reoccurring symbol on the walls and radial altar, a Mobius Loop serpent consuming its own tail, has no obvious precedent in our early history. Well, no, it wouldn't be, because we're birds. And the inscription uses an unknown alphabet. One excitable archaeologist suggests it's a relic left by an unknown precursor race. It is presumably meaningless coincidence the quake seems to have occurred at the same time as the final message from the black hole and getting through Maelstrom. Hmm, interesting. Um, well, I think that merits study. System survey complete. Sure. It's not gonna cost me anything, so I might as well. So here I've encountered some alien vessels, some hostile aliens, which is why they're red. 
Um, but basically, if you try and move into hostile alien territory with a science ship or a construction vessel, it'll try and run away. You can turn that off. If it's a military stuff, it can go blow it up. So its current power is 5 to 1. Oh, awesome, thanks. Uh, we've, um, oh, whoa, 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 faction found. Whoa, so much stuff. Um, we should leave B and remote quickly name Space Amoebas. We found Space Amoebas. Hooray, we can learn to coexist. Not going to make you into boots just yet. So if we could find a isolate, we could reduce the meter regression or possibly mask our ships from their sensors. Interesting, interesting. Not going to do that just yet. Special project complete. The Loop Temple, Time and Stone, our scientists have learned a great deal about the subterranean temple but some questions remain a roof aperture along with the radial altar suggests it was once a solar calendar but it's so badly damaged by the earthquake that we can't be certain if the builders found particular dates important we'll never know which ones we've had better luck with the unknown alphabet it's a debased variant of a better known hieratic script not an alien language at all and we've successfully deciphered it the temple is dedicated to the waiting worm or the worm in waiting most of the inscriptions are sonorous poetic invocations requesting its appearance or if read in the other direction it's a part departure there's also a body of inscriptions describing the operations of the Uniswitz, which are more excitable archaeologist swears contains references to advanced field equations. Nothing new to us, but very impressive for a temple of the vintage. We have yet to find a physicist who's prepared to go on record as agreeing that the references are meaningful, though. The temple holds no cosmic secrets or alien weapons, as far as we can tell, but its dark space is of a distinctive, menacing beauty. And the poetry of the invocations of the women waiting becomes fashionable. They are set to popular music. They are published in collections. You know, it's really funny, but I've read a 2000 AD comic, you know, the comic that produces Judge Dredd, which I think is this exact storyline. This sounds really familiar. But we'll get the strange loop. Let's let's take this to its obvious conclusion. Might be the end of my it might be the end of my playthrough really quickly. Uh, so we can build robots, robots, or planet builds being minus twenty five percent. Both of these are good. I'm gonna go with planet twenty. I'm gonna go with that. Probably not gonna go robots for a little while just yet. Um, mainly because you've then got to build robots and stuff. And I at the moment my economy is pretty crap. All things considered. A rendezvous is being held by the Sisivy of Impu... What? Read that in a second. Isis Black Syrix's name is being held by the Sisivy of Inubi Confederation Colors. This is by the fact that in sending any ID because no ship of that name has been commissioned. The Sisivy's commanding officer goes to be... Istral Simu? The captain that appears on our screen is clearly... Sorry, I'm actually a bit of shock. I don't know what this is. Estral Simu, but a scarred, haunted, decrepit, wrecked edition of... Was Estral Simu? He was the guy who went in last, wasn't he? Um, face closely with plasma is an older, much older. The bridge in the background looks just as scarred as just as decrepit, but the captain's voice is firm and clear. Finally, you're here. I've waited so long. My punishment is to die in battle against you. Please end me. I'm so sorry. Um, so we've got various options. So I could I could use my materialistic thing to say. So where did, did you learn anything useful? Um, if you want to end it, why wait? What's happening here? Are you really Estral Simu? Um, am I? Are you the same Emu you were last year? Every day is a death. Every future is a choice. Time is a labyrinth, not a road. A chuckle. It sounds like a chuckle hurts. Ask the loop. What is the loop? The loop is what came first and what comes next. The worm in waiting, and I suppose the worm is the loop. Let's say time is a labyrinth, the captain begins to gesture futilely. And the loop is its monster or its maker. No, I can't explain it, and you'll know more soon. You did in my past. Weapons locked. Um, I suppose I could tell it that a warship is full of fun ways to die. 
Don't you remember? Of course you won't yet, and you might not know not any of you do it like the loop needs its sacrifices, needs them just so. You don't want to trifle with the loop. Ugh, okay. Um yeah, cool, be materialistic. Battle stations Captain grins a scar scratch grin saying you we were gonna ask for stick crap. Meanwhile, the ISS Black Sky, maybe this came from this, has located a small, minimally powered artificial object broadcasting a looping signal at local range away. These sorts of things usually turn out to be escape pods, and this looks like one of those. It's been out here a long time. When the crew cracks it open, carefully observing quarantine procedures, they find ancient remains preserved by the sterile pod environment. So far, not unusual. The captain of the ISS Black Sirix indicates, however, they did not expect to find the EMU wells. What was, will be, what will be, was, daubed on the wall, the body fluids, and the pod's occupants. Who the crew are now wryly referring to as the messenger. They add that they are some equally unexpected and anot anatomical similarities between the messenger species and our own. Situation log update. Well, let's be honest. It's yep. Yeah, so it's going to try and evade that um, because of that thing. Um, so that's the loot, loot schizogy. It's an X Files episode schizogy. Can't remember what it means. Uh, what's happening? I was going to go situation log. Scientist present is a founder species. Where is it? Oh, it's there. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, factions. Oh, I need to go. I should probably go have a look at my factions because I seem to have a lot of them. Amiga theory. An inkling of the coming perfections and sparse factions. Half hold useless on it when complete. It may allow us to stumble upon the Amiga theory technology. Sure. That sounds cool. I don't know what it does. I don't know what it is. I've never seen this before. I love new stuff. This game has just so much stuff in it. Um, it's great. It's so cool. So we can't look at factions. So we have factions here. So factions basically give you additional um, influence. Influence allows you to build more star bases and stuff, and also perform edicts. So basically, by making them happy, everything works all right. So these guys like freedom of speech, um, anti-autocratic, free movement, and reproductive freedoms. As long as they've got those five, um, for they're happy, and everyone else is happy. These guys here uh, like AI being allowed. That's all they want at the moment. These guys basically just want. Sure. These guys just basically want us to be really nice to one another. These guys basically want us to... the are alienate associations. They don't want us to purge, which would be good. But they want to continually be meeting new people. Uh, so they want more contacts. They are getting some basic small amount of unity. Just not as much as we probably want. It's my fleet. It's going to be a pretty, pretty harsh battle, actually, that one. I've got the ability to build that starbase thing yet. Oh, it's like Stranger Things music. Or Tron. Just never forget Tron. Goodbye, Tron. I love you. Love you so much. And here we go into a space battle. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit so the space battle will be engaging quite close um if you're wondering and that's mainly because uh it doesn't quite in case it's got the pirate vessel markings and that's that's simply because um it with that realistic space mod space battles occur a lot closer together now so they've basically got little health bars there the top one the orange one is armor the blue one is shields and the yellow uh, green one is your actual health uh, Imus is silent in the days that follow. It's no small thing to order your own death, but in time that silence becomes a determination and an almost reckless confidence. Um, Estor Simmel's alive. We 
Cool. Now there's a full. Oh no, 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 no. He's he's not dead. Oh, I killed Erstel Simu with Erstel Simu because he's my admiral. And he now has four doomed. Sublight speed trust range says experience the troubling future. That's so cool. I literally have no clue what's going on just now, but that's so cool. I think I'll pull this guy back. Construction complete. It's very much just another turn this game, even though there's no turns. Uh, so, what do we want? Let's Got tons of minerals, no generation. We've got an election. There's still no one who's up for votes. Hmm. So you go to diplomacy, it's a bit boring. Diplomacy until we find someone. Harmony, yeah, not really. Foundation or oh, discovery. Discovery is something. Yeah, we're very much a curious, curious species at the moment, so I think discovery is the right way to go. Again, I'm just choosing one of the regular ones, I know. I want to choose one of the funky ones, but you just need something to, to really gel before you get the funky funky traditions. Still still don't have that missing leader. Um, so, is my science ship where I need it to be? It is. Scientist present has found a species. Okay. Yeah, there we go. We've established that the escape pod was the kind of commercially available knockoff common in the previous phase of galactic civilization. No new technologies or insights. The remains of the messenger, however, are another matter. It's unmistakably an ancestor or a variant of the emu new species. Perhaps we have cousins out there, or perhaps we were subject to genetic manipulation by a precursor race. Kalik Tekane is requesting permission to conduct more extensive research. Um, yes. Kalik Takane has reconstructed the messenger. It's quite impressive, worryingly so. It seems to be considerably more robust and aggressive than our current edition. There is some confusion about whether we were the source species in the messenger of the modified version, where the messenger was our ancestor. Kalik Takane is firmly of the latter opinion that we were once much more of a warrior species and that some meddling precursor muzzled us genetically. Indeed, they consider the loss of our ma martial abilities a tragedy. Such a tragedy they have undergone a retroviral treatment to alter their own physiology to that of the messengers. And since this will equip them with a much better ability to con This is strange. Okay, so we could kill him. We could... Kill him, but... Okay, so one is basically create a form of trees and execute them, please, and or destroy their dunce as well. Um, no, screw it. Excellent idea. Go, go for it, guys. You're crazy as crazy buggers. <laughs> crazy, crazy emus. So I'm going to upgrade the fleet. Uh, I don't actually know what they're upgrading to, but it's clearly better, so I'm not going to worry about it just now. Uh, 